Hey everyone, it's Wayne here with Pullington Lumber Company and today I'm going to talk a little bit about wavy lumber. I see this question come up a lot. People say they have a brand new mill, they're getting wavy lumber, it looks like a washboard or a roller coaster and they've leveled their mill, they've done everything that the book says, check the tensions, check the belts, check the tracking and you're still getting wavy lumber. I'm going to show you something that the books don't show you that fixes the problem. Okay, I really wanted to uh, demonstrate this more, but I'm here alone today. My uh, partner, Steve, has had surgery and is recovering. So I'm going to attempt to show you the fix and work the camera at the same time. Now, uh, first thing you want to do is uh, your blade guides. Um, I'm working right now on a Norwood HD 36, but this is pretty standard with, uh, with any mill that uh, is having this issue. If you can turn the wheel and hear either your rollers or your uh, guide pad scraping, then you need to adjust it. And what's going to happen is you're going to find that when on uh, uh, Norwood and similar mills when you loosen When you loosen this tension bolt here that pad on the top is going to pop up It's going to have a lot, uh, considerable amount of tension onto it and it's going to pop up and it'll be the same with the other pad And the reason this is happening especially with you guys with brand new mills is this You've got your belt that runs along this pulley and there's a gap between the pulley and the belt. And as the belt wears in, it seats up into the pulley, which raises your blade. So you may not even know it. Uh, and you'll be going along and wondering why you're having issues. Uh, but the main reason is after you get this all said and done and your mill it has to be level to do this the main reason for dips and dies after you've adjusted your blade guides I'm gonna pull my uh, right back to give us a little bit more room to show you is I have a magnet on a level and you put that level on there if your mill is level and it looks like that that's a problem you want to turn it this way so the mill is level back side to side but when i go level this way in between the teeth that's telling me that the front of the blade is dipping down and in, with any bandsaw if the blade is dipping down when you cut into the wood it's going to travel down and what happens is it gets so much tension on the blade after going down so far, it eventually curves and comes back up, but goes right back down again. And that gives you dips and dives. In order to fix that, even though you've adjusted the tracking exactly the way the manufacturer said to do it, you're going to have to adjust your tracking just a little bit, one way or another, until you get that, that level level because you want it as level as the mill's level so if your mill is perfectly level you want that blade perfectly level if the blade blade is just a little off one way or another you're going to get probably not dips and dives but you're going to get a slight taper where your board is going to be narrower on one end than the other as the blade travels it's cutting in that direction and in it's cutting in that direction so slightly that it doesn't, you're not building the tension to pull it back up. And another good thing to remember is if you change your drive belt, you're going to want to change your idler belt as well because they wear relatively at the same rate. And if you put a brand new belt on one side and not the other, what you're going to have is one side of your board is going to be I would say a sixteenth of an inch or so 
uh, different than the other side. And you may say, well, it's rough cut lumber, I don't care. But the guy who is running, who's buying the lumber from you and running it through a planer, he's going to see that sixteenth of an inch. So it's always a good idea, if you're going to change one, to change them both. And, but uh, a drag, right now it's showing me that uh, my blade is pointing down in the front. So that means I've got to take the tracking and move the blade forward a little bit because what's happening is the belt is hitting more towards the front of the blade and pushing the, the this belt right here hit more towards the front of the blade and pushing that blade down so if I move just slightly track the track, track the blade forward a little bit that will level, level out and I'll have a perfectly level perfectly level with a mill and so on okay I've adjusted the blade I'm sorry get myself all turned around here there you go it was just a half a turn uh, uh, from the manufacturer's suggested setting and tension you want to do this with a blade fully tensioned you want to track it first because it'll get you close but now I'll no longer have that dip. Uh, it'll, it's gone. And I've adjusted both guides. So now they're not scraping the blade when it goes around. And I should be good until the next blade change. I do this every blade change. And like I said, this is going to happen more with the guys with a brand new mill. Because you got a brand new blade on there. A brand new belts. And those belts... Are going to seed in and when they seed in they're going to uh, uh, raise your blade up just slightly but it'll be enough to hit your guides so anybody out there having issues with wavy lines changing blades doing everything they say in the forums and nothing's happening this is a fix that doesn't seem to appear anywhere else Hopefully there's other guys with the same video. And when Steve gets back from uh, healing after his operation, I am hoping to do more vid videos that uh, will be helpful to uh, uh, sawmill owners. Everyone have a great day. And this is Wayne from Fullington Lumber Company. And I approve this message.